As of the recording of this video, there's a lot of controversy around carbon credit verification organizations like Vera. Accusations that there are a lot of fake carbon credits out there that aren't actually benefiting the environment. So that leads us back to a few central questions. What makes a carbon project high quality? And what gives a particular carbon credit more validity over others? We're going to answer those questions in this video. Now we'll start with the five notable quality aspects of a project and then some of the social aspects of a carbon project after that. So jumping right into it, the first aspect of determining if a project is credible is with credible baselines, which is one of the main questions surrounding those Vera Red Plus Forest projects being targeted by the mainstream media recently. Baselines refer to what the level of CO2 emitted would be in a particular area or industry if the carbon reduction project in question did not exist at all. If baselines are not accurately defined, this becomes a potential situation where you could see overcrediting, where a company has said the baseline in an area is artificially high, so they'll get more credits or offsets in their production, whether it was meant to be facetious or not. So we want to see companies accurately measuring their impact on the environment. Next up is the concept of additionality, very important for carbon markets. This is the idea that there needs to be verification that the emissions reductions made by a project would not have happened without receiving funding from the carbon markets. So for example, you won't see many solar or wind projects in the voluntary carbon markets anymore because these projects can exist without carbon financing. The input costs for building solar or wind projects have come down immensely, so they can be profitable on their own just with other subsidies from the government or selling electricity themselves. So they don't need to be involved in the carbon markets at this point. And that describes the financial aspect of additionality, but there are also technological, ecological, and other types of additionality in carbon projects as well. Another aspect a carbon project developer has to account for is leakage. Leakage refers to when a project simply displaces a source of emissions to another location instead of getting rid of it entirely. Now we wanna see companies be aware of this and bake it into their carbon credit production estimates. So, an example of leakage would be when a company develops a new avoided deforestation project in a particular area, but then the loggers that are cutting down trees in that area just move next door to another part of the forest. Well, you know, all the project did was move the planet damaging activity to the left or the right. You know, this didn't really help the environment at all, and now that project's getting paid for pretty much no reason. You know, most project types will have to account for some level of leakage. It can vary based off the project, of course. Uh, but a credible project will leave room for potential leakage and take note of that in their emissions reduction estimates. Next up is permanence. This refers to the idea that a carbon credit needs to have a long-term benefit to the environment. For credits to be considered permanent, primarily ones coming from the nature-based or climate storage project types, the emissions associated with the offsets from these projects generally needs to be sequestered for at least 100 years, if not longer. Most of the time, to ensure that all the credits or offsets a project generates remain permanent, a project will factor a buffer into its credit production estimates. A buffer pool of credits that it's created so a project can draw from it in case you know trees burn down or in any situation where sequestered carbon can escape at a higher rate than usual. Now the fifth and last quality a project needs is robust MRV standards. MRV stands for Measurement, Reporting, and Verification. Obviously, all the qualities we mentioned up until this point of the video need to be tracked accurately. And that comes with the proper collection, analyzing, and storage of data. We want to see transparency on what and how the company is tracking emissions and project details. And all this needs to be easily accessible for third-party validators to confirm everything that the project is saying. You know, accurate tracking contributes to avoiding common issues in the space like double counting of credits and ensuring qualities like permanence are present in a project. Now let's move on to a few of the social aspects of a project that could contribute to the quality and price of a project's credits over time. As the CEO of Base Carbon, Michael Costa, mentioned in a recent investor call, there's potential for market demand to emerge for carbon credits that are trading at a premium based on their social benefits, not just rarity, age, and other quality factors. The benefit a credit has for the community around the project could contribute to a credit's price in the future as well. 
So the first social aspect to note for a project is the safeguards they put in place to ensure that they don't harm the communities around the project or cause any ecological harm in the area. Ideally, a project needs to bring higher ethical standards into regions where the laws might not be up to Western par. And we want to see projects advocating for human rights and avoiding other illegal practices, as well as protecting the environment in the area as well. Now, whether the government in the country the project's located in actually cares about that or not, uh, we still would like to see that, of course. And it's best when a project is aligned or even helps fill the gaps that governments can leave in these areas, you know, either financially or socially. Now, the second social aspect for a company to contribute toward is sharing or aiding with local communities. Now, similar to mining projects in a way, these project developers have to build rapport with the local communities, you know, establishing clear benefits for the community so they welcome the project. They can do this by providing employment to the locals in the area, paying for improved infrastructure, or other non-monetary benefits as well. If a deforestation project can provide loggers in the area with better jobs, now that's a great way for a project to turn a negative into a positive. So, with all this said, you know, how do we as average Joes figure out if a project is legitimate or not? You know, it can be difficult to get adequate data like this in the markets right now, but that transparency is growing over time. You know, one of the best ways to have a significantly higher chance of finding a good project is when they've been verified by one of the major carbon registries like Vera, Gold Standard, or others. You know, while Vera has been under fire recently, you're far better off only looking at projects verified by these companies than trying to figure it out all on your own. Secondly, there are also new organizations emerging in the space to bring credibility, like the Integrity Council for Voluntary Carbon Markets, or ICVCM. An independent board of key stakeholder groups in the carbon markets, the organization is developing the core carbon principles which will be a global benchmark for high integrity credits. Their 10 principles are essentially a combination of everything that's been mentioned in this video. So there are a variety of entities either entering the space or already redefining it to ensure that all these carbon credits or offsets are actually benefiting the environment. And standards are only going to improve over time. But yeah, that is going to be the end of the video here. If you'd like to see more ESG or carbon related videos like this one, especially investing related videos and consider subscribing to the channel and checking out some of my other content as well. Thanks for watching.